As an RVer, the ability to cook outside feels like a required skill before you hit the road. But I have a secret to share with you. After eight years of full-time RV living, I'm horrible at cooking outside. And not only that, I'm actually flat out horrible at cooking at all. Like, is this a nutcracker? I don't know what this stuff is. Dude, you not know how to slice a lime? I don't know how to do it. This is so bad. <laughs> now, Marissa wishes I could cook. There's something there, there... about a man cooking. If you're learning how to cook and smoke meat, it's the best day of my life. Other RVers see me as less of a man because I don't know how to cook. <laughs> I can't let it with a straight <laughs> Did you always love smoking meat or like? No, I used to be like you. And now you're a real man. <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, cooking, especially when it comes to smoking meat, feels like more work than it's worth. I did not know this was part of the deal when it came to smoking meat. But today, all that's gonna change. Or is it? Because <laughs> today my hope is to become a real man and learn how to smoke meat. And it all starts with what I've seen is one of the most up and coming trends when it comes to RV cooking gear, a portable pellet grill. And here it is. This is the Green Mountain Grill Davy Crockett Edition. And it is actually surprisingly heavy compared to some of the other grills we've had. So now our RV comes with this griddle, which I do like that they've started doing this. Manufacturers listened and they stopped putting those burners as often on the outdoor kitchens and started putting the griddles. And so the griddles are better, I think, than just having like a couple of burners. But at the same time, really seeing the trend of people going to this. So this is a smoker and it's a portable enough smoker. You can use it while you're RVing and camping. So I'm of course not going to be taking this on on my own. Stuart and Lindsay from Living Small Dreamy Bigger here. And we've got another friend showing up later tonight who uh, has grilled a couple of times or two you've probably seen in videos. Uh, between the two of them, they have forgotten more than I'll ever know about grilling. We get this open, get this set up. Apparently, grilling actually starts the day before sometimes. <laughs> I've never started anything the day before. <laughs> Am I gonna screw this up? <laughs> if you're learning how to cook and smoke meat, it's the best day of my life. Nathan and I got married and we kind of looked at each other like, okay, who's supposed to do the cooking here? Because I grew up, my dad did a lot of the cooking, his mom did a lot of the cooking. We defaulted to um, just surviving, I guess is probably the best way I to mean, describe. I mean, not terrible. No, no, we, we eat. But if we could <laughs> kick up our like food game, I just did not realize how much of the RV world was so like, hey, let's get together and break bread together. So we need to work on our our bread breaking. <laughs> and like as a man, I'm sure some of you guys watching this, like as a man, if you can't cook, it's kind of embarrassing. Like I, I've basically lived in a life of embarrassment for almost eight years on the road. So today is the day. I actually thought the day was tomorrow. <laughs> Apparently we have to prep the meat. Today is the day. This is what makes this model cool, is it has these legs that flip down. I know for sure, like if you have a tunnel cover, like over the back bed of your truck, you can flip these up and then it'll slide in under that space. I didn't know this thing was so heavy, Stuart. That doesn't seem right. Seems like those legs are just gonna slip right out. Should I read instructions, I guess? Not if you're a real man. <laughs> Not if I'm a real man? <laughs> well, these legs are gonna slip right out. I'm gonna break it in the first five minutes is what I'm afraid. Well, don't do that. Ah! Everybody moving this around just makes it look so light. Boxes everywhere. How far do I need to have this from the rig? Is it smart to have it right next to the propane tank, or does anybody ever do that? Definitely. People do that. Okay. Well, it's a couple feet away. Couple feet away from the rig and everything else. Okay. This little bolt right here just leans against that on each side, and that's what's keeping the legs from collapsing. So when you pick it up, it relieves that pressure, and then the legs fold up. Probably the perfect person to show this because I know nothing about what I'm doing, and I way overthink everything. So. 10, 12 volt recipes. Oh, cool. Can even come off the battery, I guess. I don't know what you cook with that. <laughs> Probably not much. Something goes here. That just looks manly. So this is the Davy Crockett. Stuart has the, is it the Trek? What's that one called? Trek. Trek? Yeah, just the new version of this one. Better is what he's saying. Oh, that's what's true. No, I, you, you know, I wanted this one, but I couldn't get this one in the time frame I needed to get that one. So that's why I ended up with that. I like the leg style on this. Something has to go here. Oh, let's see. Tiny slant down to the grease right here. This is that? That looks like something that kind of goes on the side, doesn't uh -oh. it? You just, it slides in and catches. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, old, but you got more stuff than I do. Cool. I don't have a tool rack. It didn't come with that with yours? No, I you got ripped off, Stuart. I'm trying to stand all the way up. <laughs> so you have to get down just a little bit, but definitely, 
I would say definitely doable. Like, better than taking table space. Tell me why you actually like to grill, Stuart. Gives me a reason to do nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> Stand outside and act like I'm doing stuff when really I'm just outside relaxing. And it actually makes a lot of sense. I've been I running knew my, it. I've been running myself ragged for years. Anybody who knows me knows that I don't sit down, and it's like a reason to kind of sit down. <laughs> that makes sense why men do most of the grilling in my head now. It makes oh, that's sense. Oh, that's a hundred percent why. It's you know, an excuse I'm like, sorry, babe. Like, I gotta bust the grill. I'm doing brisket for 12 hours today. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> if it tastes good, that's fine with me. I'll suck it up. We have it food in here, right? Yep. Okay. I'm still learning all this stuff. Like, apparently you can get a lot of different kinds of rabbit food. <laughs> it looks just like rabbit. We had rabbits for the dog. <laughs> but, uh, pellets. What kind have you got in here? It's a mix of, that one is hickory, cherry, I think maple. So I just throw this in here, right? We... Well, we're using this, so don't even put that in. I have no idea what it is. Oh, that's heavy too. I'm, I'm very aware of RV weight. I've always thought RV weight. So nine pounds is what? That from the bottom over. all the way to the top would have been yep. nine pounds. Okay. And then how much cooking can I do with this nine pounds? Uh, smoke wise, like a 12 to 15 hour cook. 12 to 15 hour cook, okay. So 15, 20 bucks for a 30, 40 pound bag. So probably like five-ish dollars each time we fill this up, something like that. But again, you get 12 hours out of that. Like boondocking wise, it's really cool because you've got a lot of 12 volt options and it uses very little power. Always good to have boondocking options. First startup. How long does it take it to get to 350? Probably, you know, five to 10 minutes to get to, okay. get to that time. Fancy. It's so weird to watch smoke coming out of this. I know it's my grill. I've watched like probably dozens, if not hundreds, of hours of other people smoke coming out of other people's grills. What are today, you doing? You officially became a man. I did. I officially became a man today. <laughs> I learned how to stand around, and act like I'm doing something when I'm actually not doing anything. <laughs> so it's uh, quite the moment. All right, episode two of cooking with Nathan and Stewart. <laughs> I don't think I've ever prepped anything the day before. <laughs> Tells you, tells you my cooking, uh, I can't put on latex gloves either, my cooking expertise. So, yeah, I was shocked and Stuart said, we gotta start prepping. I'm like, prepping for what? He says, for the meal tomorrow. I'm like, oh man, I wanna get you, I wanna do a brisket with you so I can wake you up at like 1.30 in the morning to put what? it on. Dude, they can take 15 to 18 hours if it's a big one. Okay. Good times. All right. This is just like a cooking show. This is great. <laughs> it's chakra. More or less, okay. it's cheap beef. We're okay. doing smoked barbacoa tacos. Okay. It sounds good. So nice. because you smoke it so long, you can use a cheaper cut of meat. Okay. Because it, you know, obviously breaks down and tenderizes and everything else as it cooks over such a long period of time. So the smoker saves you money. Yeah, I would never, ever say that. You can tell Marissa that. It's great. Dude, this is totally cooking show because I didn't realize like I even like left everything spaced out all night. Yeah, look at, like... look at his, uh, oh my goodness. Yeah, let me get mm -hmm. that. Chili powder, salt, black pepper, umami, a little bit of garlic, and some smoked paprika. Okay, I know what like one or two of those are. I don't know what I'm doing. This is so bad. <laughs> it's like like this? <laughs> no, no. All right, put that over there. Three inch squares is what you're kind of okay. looking for. All right. Dude, that's like an inch strip. My arm's hurting. I always I tell you, I'll sharpen your knives. You can get a pizza insert for this exact one, by the way. You pull those grates out, and it literally is a whole pizza insert that drops down into the firebox. So you could do like wood fired oven style pizzas. Really? When we first started RVing, like you rarely, if ever, saw a smoker. And now you see tons of smokers. Like there's a reason for it. You did good. Good job. I did good? Okay. Good deal. You missed the cooking show. It's already over. <laughs> I might not be Martha, but I am I don't know Stewart. what's going on right now. <laughs> yeah, you might not be Martha, but you're Stuart. That's great. <laughs> Take that off. Oh, oh, oh I, hold on. I like the <laughs> The big thing about this is like the salt will start working its way into the meat and it's called almost called like a it's called a dry brine. I did not know this was part of the deal when it came to smoking meat. The side note, we love being back in Tennessee. We love hearing the birds. But can you hear, we've been calling it the car alarm bird the last few mornings. It starts about 5 a.m. and it just, I don't know how it does it. It just, it does it for like hours. Yeah. So 
this is a, um, I think it's a water tray, I think is what Stuber's prepping. It helps disperse the heat more evenly with that tray in here. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. That answers the question. And I said the water tray is not a have to, but it gives you more room for flexibility if you forget something or don't do something in the right timing. Like, it just gives you that cushion for mistakes, too, which is probably something I need right now. Stuart said this is Blackstone, I think. It's got legs that fold out. And then like the whole thing, you know, folds out. It just gives you like a second little layer of a cooking surface if you need it. So we have two smokers, so we're not using it, but if we had one smoker, you could do that. You could like have a second layer and then and then put the meat on top of that second layer. Really your biggest um, thing with these, from what I understand, like very hands off, but you still need to watch and make sure that it's not catching on fire. <laughs> Because it can't happen. Anything with grease, it could happen. So that's really like the biggest fear with this. And the cool thing is I don't have it set up yet because I have to wait for this to turn off to set it all up. But if I have this temperature sensor in there and I have the Wi-Fi going, I can set up my phone where like if it gets, it's supposed to be set to 250, let's say it just burst into some super high number away from that, like that tells me something's up and it should give me an alert uh, with that. So that's the cool thing about having that connected to Wi-Fi too. All right, cooking with Nathan Stewart, um, episode two. <laughs> I, don't know what, I don't even know what this stuff like is this a nutcracker i don't know what this stuff is so i don't even know what we're doing we're doing barbacoa tacos they've been on the smoker for three hours and now we need to put it into a braising liquid and that's what's going to make it all soft and shreddable and delicious for tacos i did not know this is a six hour cook starting slow working our way up. all right all right <laughs> a shorter smoke but there's a lot more going on with this cook first like okay. Most. Now you can you can start cutting some onions up. Okay. Just chunks. I'm cutting in chunks. Yeah. Like I said, okay. pretty much just take the skin off, and then uh, I've got to give it a better knife. Cut the thing off. Nothing crazy. Just yeah. to just half of those, and then we gotta juice those in there. Okay. Dude, you not know how to slice a lime? No. How do you slice a lime? Dude, I cut it in half. When... Oh. I had a 50-50 shot at it. <laughs> I told you, like, there's going to be stuff. I'm so naive. <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> uh, adobo chili peppers. Okay, yeah. dried. Terrified to ask you to do this garlic. I don't know. What do you mean, do this garlic? <laughs> I, I need to wear, um, I think I've got a... Oh, uh, man, we totally should have put... Thing. I've got one. I think I got an apron in there. <laughs> Sterical. Well, I'll it in a bag. I think this is Hensley's. That would be fitting, yeah. I mean, okay. Inspector. Yes. <laughs> this is probably why there's no all male cooking shows. <laughs> now we're ready. <laughs> I can't look at me with a straight line. I know how to cut a lime. I just didn't want to do it until I got this on. Two to four tablespoons is about what I you know, okay. use. Yeah. So that's like, like three and a half right there. Yeah. Parking for me. Makes sense. This is looking. This is gonna be really close on this blender here. I'll give you a dollar to drink. No, I'm not drinking. You probably saw I showed him coming in. Corey and Jesse came in too, finding her someday over here. So I'm not going to let Corey see me. I'm taking this off, so. Smoke Three hours. Up. Wow. Oh, wow. That is already good. <laughs> That's already better than anything I've ever cooked, Stuart. Was it worth getting up at six? It was worth the three hours. I'd rather it not been at six because I still haven't adjusted from Pacific time, but. No, I agree with that. To wait three hours for this? No question. JJ, that's our coffee beans. <laughs> that's what cracks me up is that he just references your, your blender to coffee. <laughs> this is so much work. <laughs> Custom bent. Hand to just barely fit in here. And... All right, ta-da! Tell me about the festivities today, Hensley. What's going on? Party. For me? No, for me and JJ. Oh, what kind of party? Birthday party. Birthday party? Okay, party time is getting close. You girls ready to party? Oh, always. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we got karaoke here, hot tub which is not ready here. Lego tent way over there. This is apparently the uh, balloon area here. It's looking good, Lily. I'm trying so hard, I'm not quite. It's a good thing you can climb trees. I'm not quite there. <laughs> <laughs> it's like bittersweet to watch your kids like 
grow up and become older because it's so fun like developing those relationships with them but at the same time I cannot believe we have a nine year old and a four year old now it's just wow their birthdays are about two, two weeks and a half two and a half weeks apart so it didn't time out where we get back in Tennessee and time's just <laughs> do both oh it's looking good I just want to like <laughs> just grab and shove it in my face I'll give you five dollars to take a bite out of one of those right now well full, full bite you're not going to taste anything for the rest of the day you didn't know Nathan's a s'more story did you when we had our air stream we wanted a s'more so bad one I say we as in Nathan and he literally lit our propane and took a fork and roasted a marshmallow in the Airstream propane stove. And that wasn't the problem. The problem was he like took it with his teeth and pulled off the remaining marshmallow and it like seared to his lips. The key is you gotta keep your lips apart. And I did the first one fine. The second one, for some reason, I, I let my lips come down on the fork. Like, don't do that. So I've, I've stopped. Blisters for weeks yeah. all over I, had, I looked like I had Botox. <laughs> that was, they were huge for weeks. So don't it took do a that. long time. And one of the coolest parts, think about it. Our friends are here to celebrate with us. And we never would have met these amazing friends and had these incredible friendships if it wasn't for full-time RVing. Sometimes it's hard to say goodbye to, to those friendships that we have in our hometown, but think of the new friendships you make, these long-lasting, amazing friendships, people from Ohio and Maine and all over the country we never would have met if it wasn't through travel. Blackstone versus Smoker, thoughts? I think you need both, honestly. What if you could only have one or the other? Probably the Smoker. You can always put a flat top on, on the, the Smoker. smoker. Like, it would yeah. not be nearly as good as a Blackstone. But if I could only have one. You could one. put a flat top on it? I mean, I know like, what you... I have Oh, one. yeah, yeah. Okay. I but just, you couldn't turn this into a smoker, right? So, no, yeah. <laughs> so, okay, yeah, that makes smoker's sense. smoker's going to be better. Okay. But, I mean, I cook almost all of my steaks that are just dry rub on a Blackstone. Hamburgers, you can't beat a hamburger on a, on a Blackstone. I like a smoked hamburger. Maybe it's just because I've had so many on a Blackstone. You know what, though? Like a quality smash burger, you get, like, that nice sear on it. Like, yep. oh, man. Like, you double up a couple patties with some cheese. and You can do well. it both ways. You can smoke a burger for 20 minutes over here and then just finish it off with a good sear over here. So that's what's cool when you kind of do a combo of both, yeah. right? Yeah. Because we have the space. I, I don't think I could do without both. But it's also, like, a passion of mine cooking outside, so... If someone doesn't have a passion for it, they're not going to want a smoker. So if you're impatient like me, and you don't have a desire to get up at 6 in the morning and start smoking, <laughs> like, I'm trying. I'm trying to be the guy that's impatient, but he's going to start loving the smoker. We're going to have the smoker for sale in probably Yeah, three yeah. Days. The link to the smoker is in the description. <laughs> um, I'm to trying to one. learn. Not, not another one. To this <laughs> that specific one. smoker has been used one time. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying to see if I have a passion for it, if I can. You have a passion for the end product. I do. Yeah, I have a passion for the end product. I mean, you can't be doing a brisket on a smoker. I I'm need not... to get him into Savide too. Tanya or... They do it oh, on a skewer. Yeah. They, they cut it the same way. I think you got to slowly cook. But then they like, you it onto skewers and cook it over an open fire. Probably. So that's the traditional way. Smoke it for like an hour. And then <laughs> they talked around the campfire for like two hours last night. I had, no <laughs> I had no clue anything you guys were saying. Like any of the terminology. It's like a whole other language and a whole other world. But you get two guys that like to grill and they will just... <laughs> Yeah. What's really cool though is like every time I smell a smoker, I think of Alaska because <laughs> that was like I bought my very yes, first one. and we started traveling with you guys. Yeah, we're I like, who like, travels with a smoker? <laughs> but I was like, I'd found out I was pregnant, and I was like so nauseous, and so like now every time I think of a smoker, I think of like being pregnant. Okay, so the stuff gets shredded up for the tacos is what's going on right now, right? Yep. Yeah, and I just kind of use this time to like get rid of like the huge chunks of fat. Make sure that's safe to eat. Yeah, that's safe. Do you make this? Kinda. <laughs> How is it? So good. Amazing. Are you gonna start making this all the time now? Um, yeah, I was just thinking I'm gonna get up tomorrow at 5.45 again and get at it. And hey, Marissa, you see this? Oh. How's it going? She's like, which one? No, I know that voice. Which that's, ones did you I make? I know, that's what I'm at. <laughs> which ones did you make? You're gonna be a pro. See, he's got it. I'm gonna let it. Melt the cheese a little more. There, oh, look at this. See, yeah. I, I don't yeah. even have to tell them. There's something there, there... about a man cooking. Yeah. I don't know about that. Yeah. You're welcome. I'm going to take one of yours, Nathan. I appreciate that. Because it looks great. <laughs> Happy 
<laughs> Yay! Good job. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, oh, good. That okay. Fun. That's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> How fast is that thing? Is that your birthday, dinosaur buddy? I love it. There you go. Oh my goodness. This is happening. <laughs> this, is happening. <laughs> this is happening. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Well, that took about five seconds. Because it's covered. Oh. But look at this. <laughs> what? Oh, is that it? Or is that's that another it. one you did? No, that's this one. That's this Before one? Before I wrapped it. You take pictures of your meat? What? What? Who doesn't? I <laughs> shot it in slow-mo. truck, too, with my water over there, so. <laughs> <laughs> Spare no expense. <laughs> <laughs> and I felt really bad because you guys all got fancy, fancy smokers. Mine's over there looking decrepit. Yours is pretty rough. Three long, hard years on that bad boy. I've got two cooks on this one, so two here we cooks. go. Here we go. It's a big knife for uh, it's a barbecue knife. We got corn on the cob, coleslaw, brisket, smashed potatoes, and whatever else everybody brings. You see, I hear the main coming out when you say brisket. Say brisket again. Now I'm going to mess it up. Brisket? I don't know. No, that wasn't. He did, didn't right, he? He goes, You're right. there br was brisket. Right. That's because I got brisket. excited. I was excited. When I was <laughs> okay, tip from Corey. number is 200. That's 200 is what you want on brisket? Yeah, like done temp for a normal steak is like 135 if you want medium. But that right there, if you want it to fall apart so you're using a fatty meat, 200 your goal. Brisket, pulled pork, there's some variance there, but that's essentially your goal. You can rest a, a brisket for two, three, four hours in your microwave or a cooler or something, and you unwrap it, it's still gonna be just as hot. It gets done cooking, you're still not done. You gotta no. wait. It's done, but if you want it to be really done, let it rest. Yeah, then it, <laughs> it holds all the juices in, and that's what makes so it. So you do all the cooking for like eight or 10 hours, and, and you still, still have to done. wait. It's patience, man, patience. <laughs> You've tasted the end result. It's good. So it's worth it. I know, I know. So I just had no, I had no clue. Surgery, man. Okay, you can look at it in 30 minutes, okay? I'm the chef here. I say it takes 25. You're probably right. I only pretend to know. You want a jiggly brisket. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's, good. that's pretty jiggly. Yeah, you want a jiggly brisket. All right, all right. What you're looking for is a smoke ring. Still not quite as right there. That's that pink outline. Yeah, that's the smoke ring. That's the smoke ring. So this is the flat. This section, like from here to there, is the f the brisket flat. This is the point. This is the fatty meat right here. This is what you want to eat here. This is good. This is better. Now right, you want to try the bad stuff first. <laughs> yeah, it's good. I think for me, and you can hear it in Corey's voice, you can see it when he's cutting the meat, like, so proud, he's so excited. He loves to cook, he loves to smoke in the grill. Like, I just don't feel that way yet. <laughs> just being honest. So I'm curious what you guys think. Like, let me know. If I keep doing this over time enough, is it something I'm gonna learn to love? Or is it something that I'm just kind of forcing myself to do because I know that that's what real men do? Marissa loves to eat things that have been smoked, and she says there's just something about a man who grills. So. <laughs> A real man. I'm just curious. Are real cooks made or born? Maybe that's the question. Do you think real cooks are made or born? <laughs> like, like if I don't like enjoy cooking, do you think there's it's something hope I can? You think, there you think is I can hope? learn to oh, love yeah. cooking, or oh, is yeah, it something like you. there's hope for me? Oh, yeah. Did you always love smoking meat, or like? No, I used to be like you. I used to be like you. <laughs> now you're a real man. <laughs> I'm not talking to you anymore. <laughs> Puberty you didn't actually say that, right? <laughs> well, I don't like to cook and Marissa doesn't like to cook, so it's a really beautiful really combination. Yeah, we love to eat. That's why we pretty much only hang out with people who can cook. <laughs> That's the first question around the campfire. Can you cook? Okay, no. That's a joke. But when you watch our videos, you're probably but you are probably like, no Nathan, that looks pretty accurate. <laughs> Twelve hour process here. Yeah, yeah this is good. Alright. 
Now, if you want to go from dreaming of a life of less junk, more journey to living a life of less junk, more journey, our community called Team Journey is the place to be. Team members encourage and support each other on their RV journey. They get to chat live with Marissa and I, and they receive insider resources like travel maps. If these sound like things you'd like to have in your next step in your RV journey, head to teamjourney.com. Well, that is our journey for this week. Until next week, we'll catch you guys later. Wait, 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 wait. Do it again.